from their play on the court to their elevation off of it. The players of the WNBA put it all on the line night in and night out. So sit back, relax, because the Hardwood 94 is coming at you right now. You know what? It's game time. Let's tip it off. Welcome to the Hardwood 94, Episode 4. I'm your host, Nick Hamilton, back in the building with another jam-packed show this week. This year's All-Star rosters are set, and the voting was led by Indiana Fever sensation Caitlin Clark, followed by Aaliyah Boston and Asia Wilson. It will be Team USA, led by Asia, Diana Taurasi, and Jewel Lloyd, versus the WNBA squad, led by Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese, in the Valley of the Sun. The weekend is going to be hot, and the festivities are going to be even hotter July 18th through the 20th. And make sure that you check out the Hardwood 94, because we'll be in full motion all weekend long. The WNBA is hotter than SoCal on fire, and the momentum continues to elevate. So much so that the L.A. Dodgers star Mookie Betts chimed in on what he thought about the league. Women's games, the men's games, because uh, you know it's more basketball, right? You know the, the men's game is, is a lot of athleticism, a lot of fun and excitement for sure. Um, but the men, the, the women's game is little the intricate things about the game, setting screens and all other type of things that uh, come into light. And that's why I really enjoy watching uh, the women. And now you see the passion, you see the personalities coming out with all the women coming now, and I think uh, that, that's huge for for them and really just the game of basketball in general. Thanks, Mookie. All right, coming up, I had to bring my roundtable of sports minds together to discuss various topics from the W, from the most impressive teams to the most disappointing ones. Can Kaylin and Angel put the W on their shoulders? All and more when we return. It's a sweet cherry red sports car. And it doesn't match the photos. It's fine, right? Sabrina, was it fine just shooting threes? No, you broke records. But it's fine to settle for a car from a sketchy site where you can get the car you love at CarMax. Yeah, you're right. Let's get out of here. Yeah. Sabrina! Nope. You sure you're not Sabrina? Nope. Sabrina? Asia? Sue? Hi. Never settle on the lot or on the court. CarMax. Welcome back to the Hardwood 94. Now, a lot of topics to break down in the most electrifying season in the WNBA. And to to assist me with that, there is none other than a dedicated, can't be duplicated, reporter that covers the L.A. Lakers, Dodgers, Rams, and the founder of Lojo Media. You all can see her on various platforms that include Sporting Tribune. Give it up for the one and only Lauren Jones. Ah, Thank you, guys. And of course, my next guest Never content, you can catch her as one of the in-stadium hosts at Dodger Stadium. She's also a field producer for Telemundo Deportes and will be producing coverage for the Paris 2024 Woo! Olympics. Give it up for the one and only Elisa Hernandez. Yay! The flowers, thank you for both of us. Yeah, you know, it's all good. That's what we do around here on the hardwood. <laughs> So, first of all, I want to talk about, to me, one of the most impressive teams that have many made a comeback, and that's the Las Vegas Aces. Yes. Now, you know they were without Chelsea Gray, uh, their point guy, the floor general. She's finally come back, and it seems like all those pieces are kind of fit into place. What's been the most impressive thing about the Aces to you, not named Asia Wilson? Right, I'm like, I mean, <laughs> to watch that game last night, I think, was a great indication of just them having such a well-balanced offense. And, and the fact that they have so much chemistry built in, like, you know that they're going to, well, one person might be slacking, or, you know, at the beginning of the season when they were having their early struggles with, you know, without Chelsea Gray, you could see really how they, the team came together. Now that Chelsea Gray's back on the court, I mean, Kelsey Plum has been playing amazing. She had an amazing second half against the Fever. Um, so I think it's just been like the chemistry has is what stands out the most about them. Um, and obviously, like Asia Wilson doing Asia Wilson things, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I'm saying, Lisa, what, what stood out to you the most? I mean, what stood out to me is like they're the back to back champs for a reason. Yes. Like, it's the reason why they have that title two years in a row. I mean, that team is just built for success. And I think when you put the pieces around them, not only on the floor, but facilities. Yeah. Equipment, mm-hmm. energy, just like you put all these things together, you're going to get a championship formula when you have these players. doesn't matter who goes out. They have that next man mentality and they have the pieces to actually train to do that. Mm-hmm. It's a lot easier to control the tempo of where the team can go. 
But also, too, I like this part, too. The fact that they did not panic. The fact that they did not go off the rails. I know there were some fans when they started going through those losing streaks. Oh, my God, no. What are you doing? But people fail to realize this league is actually a good league. And the the figure, everybody's going to come for you. You have the biggest bullseye on your backs. Everybody wants to stripe like Adidas off of you. So (laughs) there's no reason why you can't tell me that this Aces team, once they got their floor general back, that they were going to be able to sit up there and ride the ship. And the one thing that stood out to me, that as you mentioned, Kelsey Plum, congratulations for getting 3,000 career points, by the way. (laughs) Um, She said, yo, Chelsea is like a gravitational pull. Like, she knows how to put all the right pieces together and keep us in line. Yeah, I think uh, we saw that. I I saw it firsthand when she was playing with the Sparks and continues to do so. I mean, she's had such an illustrious career, but I think that that's one of the things that stands out. Everybody who's played with her says kind of the same thing, that, you know, she's just a force on the court, but also off the court. You know, she's she's one of those, like, veteran leaders that can really guide the ship when it's, you know, it might be going in one direction. She's like, ah, nah, uh, uh, let's move back over here. So I I really do think that, you know, Chelsea's presence is going to, like, change the second half of their season once the WNBA All-Star break is, um, you know, over with. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they adjust not only to the All-Star break, but also the Olympic break, because we mm-hmm. know that's going to be a very, very long period of time that they're going to have off, but Chelsea's going to keep going. But the good thing about it is she hasn't played since the beginning of the season. She's, right. uh, she was obviously out, so she's just started working her way back into basketball safe, mm-hmm. so she should be just fine for the Olympic team. And good Lord, that USA Olympic team is stacked. <laughs> I mean, yes. goodness It gracious. is so stacked. And when you look at all the talent that's on there, you start to think, like, why has it taken this long for fans to catch on to what is on the floor in the WNBA? Because you look at the talent they have stacked across. Mm-hmm. You have Stewie, you have Sabrina. You, it's just like you, you kind of go down the line and you're just like, how do you see this team losing? Right. Now, obviously, anything can happen, right? But when you start adapting that to what's on the floor every night and during the summer, mm-hmm. turn on your TV mm-hmm. and you will see why the WNBA is now growing faster than ever, yes, especially, especially with the new attention. Because like you said, when you're the champ, people want a piece of you. Mm-hmm. But when you are coming into this league, you're going you're gonna to pick the biggest fight with the biggest bully on the, on the playground. <laughs> because you know what? It is on them to knock you out. Right. Because everyone expects you to lose. But if you win, a lot well, more is said. There's one team that's taking a chip at the Aces, and that's the Minnesota Lynx. Obviously, coach of the week happens to be Cheryl Reeves, the head coach of the Minnesota Lynx. But also, I look at Nafisa Collier. Nafisa Collier Ooh. has been an absolute <laughs> beast. She is definitely in MVP contention. I know we want to give the MVP already to Asia Wilson, rightfully so, but we cannot ignore Nafisa Collier. We cannot ignore the fact of what Courtney Williams has done as the point guard of that team as well. As far as the Minnesota Lynx, can they can they achieve what they're looking out to do this year? Can they dethrone the Las Vegas Aces at some point? You know, I want to say it's too soon because of what we just said before. The general's back. Adrian Wilson is having that MVP season. You have your coach there that, it, I mean, you learn from Pop, right? right? And even and like even when you think that to your you said the bow. I'm saying the plane when you when the plane hits turbulence, <laughs> you're not scared unless the stewardess done strapped themselves in. But if they're still <laughs> serving drinks, okay, if they're still serving drinks and you hear that little boom, boom, yeah. don't worry. We are just going to hit some turbulence. You relax. And I feel like that's what Becky Hammond was able to do with the Aces while they got their floor general back. And I think what the rest of the team was like, this was your opportunity to catch up. Right, right, right. opportunity right. to show that you could be a contender. Absolutely. I think uh, to that point, you know, they have a, a culture there. So it's not like, you know, from some of these other teams, they're still kind of building their chemistry. They're still kind of like building that connection. I think some of them have already had it and, and like what the New York Liberty and some of these other teams have been able to do with the young talent that they have it's like they're they're going to give their best but because of just the pedigree of you know back to back championships is no easy feat mm-hmm. you don't see it often you know and, the, and being an MVP you know having an MVP on your team is also you know such a, a do- determining factor so I, I definitely agree with you that you know it, they might have hit a little turbulence due to some injuries and that's going to happen throughout a season but the way that they've responded the way that they you see the kind of that that you know chemistry building back up is is you know watch out. <laughs> if I'm the Minnesota Lynx, I'd be pissed off right now. <laughs> I'm saying this. Yeah. I think they have a top-notch defense that's mm-hmm. pretty much carried them throughout the season. Nobody expected. I mean, they were they were not finished. They were not favored to finish rather in the top four, top five, right? right. When the when the preseason results came out, mm-hmm. the fact that Cheryl Reeves, after a year of disappointment, came back, galvanized the troops. 
Maisha Nafisa Carter, the Nafisa Collier rather, was the one that she was going to be the one for that team. Yeah. And also having Cordy Williams, who I think was a steal, mm. by the way. Minnesota, I can't sleep on Minnesota. I think Minnesota might, they might have something to say. The other team I'm looking at also are the Connecticut Sun. And the Connecticut Sun are those, uh, is that team that's, that has a brand new album out, but they got some skips. Yeah. They've, been, they, they've, been di- they've been dipping lately. Yeah. I'm a little concerned. I, I love Alyssa Thomas. I know a, pe- a lot of people may not like Alyssa Thomas because, you know, she, she was out there clotheslining people from hell and yeah. she's on Monday Night Raw. But I also love Dewana Bonner. I love, yeah. I mean, she can shoot. You know, there's a lot of, there's a, I mean, Dejanae Carrington, who, who oh my be, gosh, yes. I mean, most improved player. She's definitely in that category. Absolutely. <laughs> was she snub? was Dejanae Carrington snub from the All-Star game? There's just so much talent on that. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like, it's, like, it's really hard to say like, oh, she should have been in for, you know, yeah. fill in the blank. Like, leave out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, I, it's hard to say that she was snubbed, but I mean, she has been playing amazing, especially like on the defensive end. I've just seen her really like elevate in that way, but uh, I don't know if, if snubbed, I mean, is the right word. Like maybe like, you know, if there was one person that had, had a dip, like closer to the all-star break, like, you know, closer to the all-star voting, then maybe, you know, she would have snuck in there. But is isn't why there's alternates. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm wow. sorry. I'm sorry. Well, I, listen, I, I, I put Dijanae as my most improved player, right? Yeah. And I, and along with De'Ara Hamby, I think they oh, both man, have been playing amazing yeah. basketball this yes. year. I think, look, I told that Dierica surprised me because I was like, hey, man, what? I know she was was the bright spot on this team right now. Oh, yeah, right now. But I'm saying like last year when she came in last year, we were wondering like, okay, Which one are we going to get? Who are we going to get? And and she went through a lot. Obviously, when I talked to her and I had a conversation with her, she was definitely trying to, you know, compartmentalize a lot of different things, including being a person on this on the L.A. Spark squad. Also, like, you know, she just had a baby. Like what people realize about, you know, the the beauty and, and the the amazing like yeah. pedigree of these women is that they are also like full time mothers and you know they have their kids so for her to come back from you know having her second child or I think maybe third second. second child you know and then to bounce back in the way that she has and to also like to have the season that she's having I mean even though the sparks are obviously still work in progress Ooh. Uh, you know, oh my, let's not get on the eight grade movie. It's long. We'll talk, we'll, 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 we'll talk you know. about that. We'll talk about that momentarily. Yeah, but but Derek can hand me the season that she's having. I'm so happy for her because she, like you said, she has gone through a lot. She's faced so mm-hmm. much criticism. She's experienced so much, um, you know, throughout her career that like to see her in this place now. I'm like, go girl, <laughs> go girl. Yeah. You know what? And I tell you what, I got a question for both of you. And something that's really been on social media as well is, can the New York Liberty remain the number one seed for the rest of the season? There's just it's too much competition, bro. I mean, like, and anybody can get hot at any time. You just never know. So it's just, it's it's tough to say. But, like, you know, Stewie, I don't count my girl out, man. I mean, she's she is uh, she is all of that. <laughs> and so, I mean, uh, so, so you up here trying to campaign for Stewie for MVP? Is that what you're doing? I mean, I'm not, Is that what we're doing right now? I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm just asking. Training, I'm just saying. I know? mean, why don't you just pull the Stewie shirt up out your back pocket right quick? I'm yeah, just asking. Girl, man. You know, you know, you know bring multiple outfits to the show. Right, okay. right, right. Exactly. <laughs> I'm saying, I mean, Jesus. Somebody give me, my, somebody give me a jersey. <laughs> wow. Okay. You know what? Uh, that was Lauren Jones, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. No, listen, Stewie is Stewie is definitely yeah. one of those ones. I mean, John, and then we can't forget John Quell Jones. John yes. Quell Jones is the second best player on that New York Liberty mm-hmm. squad. And she when made you, the All Star. Uh, yeah, she yeah. and she made the All Star team as yeah. well. But also Sabrina Nescu. And I thought your thoughts on Sabrina. What have you seen out of Sabrina that? Has has grown on you because I'm not gonna lie. They try to make her a number one, but she's not a number one to me. You know what? What what gets me about Sabrina is the fact that she can adapt to whatever role you need her to be. Because she may not be the number one all the time, but she can be the number one when that number is called upon her. And she does take those big shots. She does not shy away from those big moments. But she also knows when to delegate to the Stewies of the team. So when you look at Sabrina and her pedigree and what she's kind of gone through. You kind of take a look and a a page out of Kobe's book, right? The mom mentality, what she's done. The one thing that she's doing different than Kobe is she's she's sharing the ball, right? And I love, you know, we love Kobe. I am the biggest Kobe supporter. But I think when you look at what she's learned from that mentality and from Mm -hmm. Kobe's game when it expanded, Mm -hmm. Kobe passed that ball to to Meta World Peace Mm -hmm. in that game, right? right? And that was the highlight of that game seven. So you have that of that growth and that veteranness in her to be like, 
you know what, on this team, even though people saw me as number one, right. I don't have to be number one all the time. Right. You know what that reminded me of as far as the Liberty? Because obviously Sabrina was drafted, top draft mm -hmm. pick, going to New York, number one mm -hmm. market, yes. big market. Mm -hmm. Joe Asai invested a lot of money into that franchise, being yeah. the owner of the Brooklyn Nets, making sure they had an NBA-style arena yeah. for the yes. fans and yep. be able to yep. embrace them as well. Yep. But the one thing this team reminds me of is Paul Pierce and the Celtics. You remember when Paul Pierce <laughs> kept <laughs> Trying to get to the, you know, get in the playoffs, but couldn't get to the yeah. finals. And then all of a sudden, they made a trade for KG. Yep, yep. They made a trade for arguably one of the great shooters. Um, and so when I look at Stewie, when I look at John Quayle, and even look at Courtney Vandersloot, yeah. yes. that's what that reminds me of. Mm -hmm. When I get the, when I see the Ray Allens, when I see the KGs yes. and, mm -hmm. pa and pairing them up with a young Rondo, mm -hmm. and then going up and then going back and forth, that's what this New York Liberty, Liberty team reminds me of now. As you mentioned, Lauren, they had chemistry issues, and I still think they're trying to work those things out yeah. because, my God, that decimated blow they, they, they suffered at Game 4 in the WNBA Finals. My God, it was, it was, it was heartbreaking, but I didn't shed a damn tear. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's going to be interesting. I, I, so do you, real quick before we cut to break, mm -hmm. yes or no, can they hold the number one seed? I'm going to say no. Ooh. I think there's some people. What? You going, you walking back, Stewie? You, 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 you're down in Stewie? I think Stewie, Stewie is still, um, you know, in, in the MVP conversation. But, um, you know, I, I think that there's going to be some some changes. Who knows how, you know, health and all those things, mm -hmm. you know, not wishing that. But, like, it's going to be affected on some of these other teams. So I just, uh, you know, I don't know. It's tough. It's tough to hold that top spot for the entirety of the all season. Right. But, you know, yeah. Right, some... Stewie's watching. <laughs> I'm going to go with they can hold on to that number one spot. Now, what it will do come postseason, that's going to be a different story. Because right. the thing is, as we've seen multiple times again, the dark horse has been seeming to make a longer run in the playoffs lately. So I think that they can hold on to it. But once postseason starts, it's a fresh, it's a fresh set of rules. It's a brand new season. <laughs> All right, y'all. Is it too much Caitlin Clark talk or not enough? I want to get your take and your take, okay. Elisa, on that when we, be, when we return. Oh, thank you for inviting us. We actually used to come here all the time, right, Thomas? You don't hear her talking to you. You better get your wife, man. Ain't nobody got to get me. Let's just order. I just want to have a nice night. I don't know how you do it, Ava. Oh, see, she tells you everything, huh? Palace. You know what? I can't do this. And what y'all looking at? No rest for the weekend. You are home now, and you are safe. No light in the dark. I tried everything. No peace to be found. You have taught me since I was a little girl to be a good wife. You think he's gonna stop? Stop! That boy put his hands on me. But what happens when that's not enough? Sometimes we hold on to the things that God Himself wants us to let go of. I didn't realize how deep in the red I was. When this divorce is over, I want to be in the black. Girl, you got that man out of your house? Now we need to celebrate, get you a new man. I am not even thinking about that. Honestly, I never liked the way he treated you. I always thought you were too good for him. Aren't you glad to see me? I gave up so much of myself to be with you that you haven't met the real me. Stop, stop repeating. He walked inside your house and now he's sitting outside the bank? Ava, you need a restraining order. I'm gonna tell you this just one time. You better leave me alone. Pushing a good woman too far. No rest for the weekend. No light in the dark.
right, y'all, welcome back to the Hardwood 94. I'm joined by my special panel, Lauren Jones, as well as Elisa Hernandez. Now, is there too much Caitlin Clark talk, or is it simply just not enough? Elisa, I'm going to start with you. <laughs> Can you ever have enough? I mean, <laughs> we would be out of business, honestly. Because, look, Caitlin Clark is what people want to talk about. Like, we may not like it but it's what people want to talk about. And I think what she's doing on the court and the opponents that she is facing is causing the conversation. She just went against Diana Taurasi, who was obviously one of the greatest WNBA players, NBA players to ever play. And you go back to when Caitlin was first going, coming into the league and Diana said, like, she's going to get a big reality check. Now, the Fever went on to win that game. And what did the Fever Twitter do? They literally posted reality check on their Twitter with the final score of that. Savvy. So it's like you have that pettiness back and forth, which is good. It's all it's all in fun. But, you know, you have these moments that continue to come up. And we talked about this in the previous segment. When you have a player like that, you want to go straight for them. You always want to beat the Caitlin Clarks of this league. And as Caitlin Clark, you have to try to take out the former two-time champion, the former rookie of the year, the former lead, the current leading leader scorer of the entire WNBA. You have to go after them. So when you have these games and you come out on top, you're going to be the talk of the town. Well, I don't know if it's so much, like you said, I think it is about, obviously, she's must-see television, mm -hmm. but is she forced-see television? See, that's where I kind of have this, this back and forth, because I do think, you know, for the league to continue to grow at the pace in which it is, and I, I think that it's important that, you know, we continue to see her on, making headlines and that, that the conversations are centered around her, but there's times in which I'm just like, this, it's not warranted. <laughs> like, so somehow they, like, the, the forcing is, you know, when it, it could be like Angel Reese just got her 11th straight, you know, double double or whatever. And then it's like, but Caitlin Clark could be on the brink of getting her first one, you know? So it's just like that to me is forced. And so I think there's a way in which you continue to have storylines and, and generate buzz and, and conversations around her without taking away or, you know, sharing the spotlight with some of these other stars who are actually really doing impressive things. Because in a loss, we shouldn't be talking about Caitlin Clark. In a loss, we should be talking about the team that won. So, like, those are the times that, or, you know, you know, you, could, you talk, talk about her, you know, how she should improve. But, like, the, the criticism is not as loud as the praise. And so sometimes I think that that's where the balance needs to be struck. And that's as a journalist, you know, where, what my approach would be. Well, here's the thing about Caitlin Clark. I've never said that she doesn't belong on the next level. I think she right. definitely belongs on the next level. Her work ethic is incredible. Yes. However, this reminds me of Tim Tebow 2.0. The, f the difference is the fact that Tim Tebow had no business playing in the NFL, and Caitlin Clark does. But as far as the <laughs> hype is concerned, yeah, I said it. Oh, well, you'll live, Tim. Take a knee. Um, Caitlin Clark, to me, I think people, ha they have tried to force feed her and act like, not her, but I think people around right. have tried to act like she is the Lord and Savior of the WNBA. Mm -hmm. And I think that rubbed people the wrong way. And when you have um, our fellow media pundits yeah. caping up for Caitlyn Clark as a, and you got these Caitlyn crybabies out here that every time you say something <laughs> against Caitlyn, oh my God, you're an idiot. You don't know basketball. Have you watched her? Yes, you, yes, you idiot. I have watched. That's why I'm saying what I'm saying. <laughs> right, exactly. I know exactly what I'm saying. I've been watching longer than you have. I can, I can, I can close. So, uh, so yes. what I'm saying is, it's okay to, to your point, Lauren. It's okay if you like Caitlin Clark, yeah. but that does not mean you have to hate everybody else, including right. Angel Reese. Mm -hmm. And will she ever not be the villain? Speaking of Angel Reese, and you mentioned about her having 11 consecutive double doubles. Mm -hmm. She's also been named Rookie of the Month. Yeah. Um, is she going to lose that villain title? I know she said she embraced it. Yeah. But. Did she really embrace it? Kind of like, she, to me, she embraced it like LeBron embraced it when he went to the Miami Heat. <laughs> right, 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 right. I feel like um, for her, it, you can see like her starting to soften up on certain things. Like when she, um, they, you know, showed the clip of her when she found out that she was going to be an all-star and to see her, you know, get emotional about that. Like she might continue to be the villain, you know, just because it, they have to have, you know, some kind of balance. It has to be a villain in some instance. But mm -hmm. I think as we go through this, like kind of all-star break and the Team USA, like that break, we'll, we'll see kind of maybe a different side of her potentially. And even, you know, coming back from that after their teammates, you know, how that will affect, you know, their dynamic 
like and and how she's seen. But um, overall, I think Angel Reese is just such a dog. I mean, the Bayou Barbie is giving, um, and the way that she's played over this season, I mean, is bar none. So yeah. I mean, she did say that she was grateful to the fact that she fell to number seven oh, and yes. the fact that she was drafted by the Chicago guys. She gave a lot of credit to her teammates and everything. Now, as far as her embracing the villain side. I feel like she's embraced it as a defense mechanism versus an actual identity to her game, right? I think when when people are attacking her, she she puts on that shield and I can take it and I'm this and I'm that. But then when you want to be seen in a different light, you have a different tune. So I think for me, it's like there is first of all, Reese, I love your game, I love you, but it is okay to be the villain and it is okay to not be liked by a large portion of the league. Now, this always reminds me of the amazing commercial, and I'm gonna quote Kobe Bryant again. When Kobe had, when he retired and he had that commercial where everyone's screaming out how they hated him for so long, <laughs> it's because they did. And I think for Angel Reese, she has that aura of being like, when I come to town, I'm gonna defeat you. <laughs> but when I leave, like, it, everything's fine. <laughs> and do so you have that dynamic kind of like Bird and Magic did when you guys are coming up and you have that dynamic with Caitlyn and with Angel Reese? And I think that's what's going to really elevate this league because you can't talk about Caitlyn Clark without talking about Angel Reese as far as Angel Reese was the reason why we paid attention to Caitlyn Clark mm -hmm. ever since the college days yeah, yeah, and with yeah, the ring. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you can't see me doing the Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that overall, I think that's going to carry the league. I think that's going to be able to get going. But listen, to be hated is also to be respected. Mm -hmm. And I'm starting to see some of these Caitlyn crybabies out there starting to give Angel Reese slight props because she's improved from the moment she stepped on the floor. Yeah. People got mad because she went to the Met Gala. What you mad because your favorite player didn't go to the Met Gala? Okay. Well, Angel Reese can pull that off. She's from B-more. Yeah, and, and, and ball out the next day. And I oh, think, yeah, did she not? But that Wait. was, that was Wait, that, was, that, was, that, that was that was the, that was that, that was the biggest thing Wait. that was the biggest thing for me because look everybody 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 and this is not just like unique to her mm -hmm. because any player that does anything fun and then loses the next day everyone's on them yeah. right but you have to look at it this way for her to step out in that way be at one of the biggest events in the entire country at that time at the Met Gala with you know, rubbing, rubbing elbows and kissing babies. <laughs> now, for her to take that flight and then ball out the way that she did, to me, it showed, like, don't worry about me. I got this. Mm -hmm. I, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm capable of. And I think that really quieted a lot of the doubters because when you look at the game that she's able to put on the floor and you're able to look at the Caitlyn Clark, it's like, don't be mad that it's the same result despite not the same process. And I yes. Think, yeah. And I, I mean, think I, yeah. You, you made a good point earlier, too, about not only, well, no, I'm sorry, Lisa, you made the point about her going to Chicago, but you also made the point about her team and mm -hmm. having that team mm -hmm. and being able, when you, when you and I talked about Camila Cordoso finally coming into the play, so now that kind of takes some pressure off of Angel, yes. as well as having coach Teresa Weatherspoon, because Spoon ain't no joke. No joke. <laughs> no joke. I mean, I think that that's, that, the, the team aspect is, is also, you know, she's, um, said it time and time again she's repeated that 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 the support that she's received from her teammates and, and you know just the culture that she that she, she's happy and relieved that she actually fell to number seven as a result of that so I think that like that team dynamic is helpful especially um, when there's so many eyes on you and there's so much criticism and so much flack that you're going to get to have that camaraderie which I think is kind of opposite of, of you know how Caitlin Clark started off the season um, with the fever is is really important but also I think I think at least you made a, a really poignant point in stating that, you know, if if she had not won that game the next day, the, there would be the so much you would, would not hear the end of it, is. right? You she's not focused. Yeah. She's, she's not, yeah, you know, but this isn't her fault. Yeah. It's not a one size fits all. And I think that that's what is so amazing about, you know, this dynamic of the new wave of players is that they are able to do a little bit of everything. But as long as you're producing, like, no excuse, just produce. So as long as you're producing on the court, there's nothing really people can say about it, right? I mean, winning, winning solves everything. Oh, yeah. So I think going back to your point that when we started this discussion was is Caitlin Clark too much? Look. There's a way to like Kaylin Clark and like Angel Reese, but there's also a way to highlight the importance of what Kaylin Clark is bringing to this league. And I yes. say this with the All-Star votes, <laughs> Kaylin Clark got seven, over 700,000 yes. All-Star votes. Yes. Number one vote getter in the WNBA. Now, when you look at last year, it was Aja Wilson. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that number, because I wrote it down, let's see, <laughs> over here. Yeah, it was uh, uh, 95,000. 95,000 oh to 700,000 votes. And Asia Wilson led that last year. So in a year, you're telling me 
there is that big of a growth. So you have to acknowledge that. And that does not take away from Angel Reese. That does not take away from Adrian Wilson. That doesn't take away from anyone. It lets people know, you know what? People are going to watch the All-Star game. And I think the biggest thing when you, when people don't know what they want, honestly, most of the time, when there's too many choices, they don't know what they want. But when I'm showing you what's on the menu and, I'm, and it comes with pictures, there's a good chance I'm going to order that instead. You're damn right. Especially when I go to certain restaurants, I'm going to order even if, <laughs> and if it's nasty, I'm going to tell you about it too. <laughs> Angel Reese is nasty on the board. She is mm-hmm. nasty in the paint and good Lord, she's only going to get better. And we've seen the maturation of her game from the season. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Rookie of the month. Oh, yeah. And Rookie she of the month. I'm telling you now, if she keeps getting these double doubles, I don't want to hear a damn thing about her not being rookie of the year. Because okay. we we gonna have we gonna have an issue. Well, that's we it. gonna have a serious issue. That's I'm not, telling you now. That is gonna be a that's, that's gonna be a real big issue I that I think you and you kind of see who's gonna be rookie of the year. And then to your point, Lojo, what you said earlier, you said when you highlight, you don't highlight players on the losing team. Right. right? And I will say this. I saw more. This is one criticism I, I will give. I saw more about Caitlin Clark almost getting a triple double and almost being the first WNBA rookie to get a triple double than I did see about Angel Reese getting eleven double doubles in a row, which is a WNBA rookie record. Well, if we were playing almost, we playing horseshoes, she would have won. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is basketball. All right, y'all, coming up on the other side of the break, Cameron Brink went down. What does that mean for her future as well as the Los Angeles Sparks? We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Hardwood 94. Of course, I have my girl Lojo, Lauren Jones here. Of course, Elisa Hernandez as well. Now, Cameron Brink unfortunately went down with a season-ending injury or the knee injury that cut her season short. She's out for the year, unfortunately. Now, did the L.A. Sparks not only lose their star and star power on and off the court? I'll start with you. Yes, 100%. Yes, they they did. They did. I'm sorry. They did. And it's sunny, all right? It's California. There's palm trees everywhere. There's shade everywhere in this town. And you, you did. And the reason I say that is because you just had Jimmy Butler come to the game, rocking that number 22, 22 I believe, for certain number. So when you have those that kind of attraction coming back, which we haven't seen since probably Candace Parker and NECA were playing here when they won the title, when you have that attention coming back and then poof, is gone. Now, granted, they do have Derrica, which is, which is also that she is the bright spot but that's not enough. In, not in this town, not in LA, when you need the stars to be on the court and that brings the stars sideline. Ooh, did she just throw some shade? Did Elisa just throw I, some I shade at the air? I put all the shade. It got really cold in here. And nice. I, mean, I know it's always, look, I know, I know, I know it's always sunny in California, but there be some breezes from time to time. And this is not to take away from her game because you are an all-star and I respect that. But she also has to understand there's more of it. And Cameron, losing Cameron Brink and what she was doing, what she was bringing to the table offensively, defensively, yeah. and just the aura that she brought back to that Sparks team. Yes. She brought the spark to that Sparks team. <laughs> now, Derrick trying to get that back, but got to make sure it lights. We get, we, uh, Lauren, we're going to get her some security when she goes yeah. back to Staples. Oh, so. I, 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 I grew up. I, first of all, I grew up here. I don't need no security. <laughs> right. I don't need no security. You see these nails? I'm the bat. <laughs> no, I, I will say that for Cameron Brink, I think one of the things that stood out is just like her presence was a present. You know, like I mean, she was like the the press tour that all of them were on when they first yeah. started, you know, this season, to see them, um, she was like the anchor. She was the one who was really, um, that stood out, uh, especially how, she, you know, it, it was Mash was just not on the court, but off the court as well, you know, uh, making fashion statements and, you know, posting up at different games. I mean, she just... The LA, the LA lifestyle. She, she really fit in seamlessly. And so I think that that, that on on that end, to that, to that point, like, you know, that is a big loss. But I won't take away from, like, Lexi Brown and some of these other players who have attracted, you know, a similar crowd in terms of the, like who's sitting courtside and whatever have you. We saw, you know, the the Shannon, uh, the, I'm sorry, the Gilbert Arenas crew, you know, come to the game and sit courtside to support her. So I think, you know, Cameron Brink was a huge loss, but I don't think that like the season is just like all said and done. And I think that we saw them, you know, be able to to um, sell out Staples Center, you know, twice, you know, this season. And so like to see those kind of numbers, you know, even without Cameron Brink is, I think, 
it bodes well for just the growth of the league. And even though the Sparks are not having the best season, you know, it's it's still um, it's still great. Well, what you're saying, the numbers, I'm looking at that 415 record and that eight game losing streak, yeah, which is yeah. the highest in the WNBA right now. So that's the numbers I'm looking at when it comes to stars. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at I'm looking at one number. That's 22 because there's an absence of 22 in the building. I don't I don't care what nobody says. 22 draws the crowd. And when I'm looking at 22, I'm looking for okay, what's Cameron gonna do tonight? She gonna block shots. She gonna hit a shot. She gonna right. knock down a three. What is she gonna do that's gonna electrify the crowd? Because yeah, you you said Lexi Brown, and that's cool. I know. No disrespect to Lexi, no disrespect to De'Arica, but damn it, they ain't Cameron Brink. Because right. I know when I went to Dodger Stadium, when it was Cameron Brink and Rakia Jackson, oh, yes. I got over 4 million views on Twitter, just her, <laughs> those two hanging out in the dugout. Yes. And in the fashion sense that Cameron Brink Cameron Brink brings to the to the staple. Oh my God, it's ridiculous! Oh, like yeah. I'm waiting for her to be in Paris on a fashion show, yes. something, because <laughs> this girl is box office, and I and I, I think. A lot of people, we, we criticized the pick when they first got Cameron Brink at two. Mm-hmm. Everybody thought, hey, okay, if, if, if Caitlin's going one, then Angel should go two. Obviously, L.A., number two market, Bird, Magic, the whole, yep. the whole shebang. I was going to say, she's mm-hmm. giving Magic vibes. I mean, she's yeah. like, yeah, she's a present. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, definitely. And then yeah. you got Cameron Brink, who we knew could play. Right. But did she have that star quality? And we just had to wait and see it, and it was exposed. Yes. And so now it's like, to me, I think the Sparks – are starting to look like the Clippers of the sports arena days. Oh, my goodness. People are coming to watch You think I need security? Woo! <laughs> you think I need security? Wild. Four and 15? <laughs> no, no, I mean, honestly. Four and 15? Yeah, it's game losing streak. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Four and fifteen. That's all I'm saying. I, I don't get some water because y'all y'all coming in. I, 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 I just want to. I mean, Look. listen. You got you lost. You, Elisa said eight game losing streak mm-hmm. could be ten by the time this homestand yeah. is over because yep. you play the Aces, yep. you play the Phoenix Mercury. Yep. And so I'm looking at this. Pack it up. I, I mean, pack it up, pack it um, in. Just get Juju to come over and, you know, play. I mean, we got. I mean, that, games for, something. For I mean, I can't, I can't. I don't know. And here's the thing. I'm not down. I, I mean, all jokes aside, I'm not down in these players. But what I'm saying is, what is it going to take? Is it the coaching? Because I don't believe oh, in Kurt Miller. Oh, gosh. Okay. I do not believe in Kurt Miller. How many coaches are going to go through? And, like, I mean, it'll be a record, wouldn't it? Like, they already said, just got rid of Derek Fisher. Okay, then we bring in, you know, Kurt. I don't. I don't know who are they going to get that, you know? I think it's, it's like a combination of things. Well, you know, that's not, I think, I feel like that's a problem across the LA basketball teams right now. Oh, it's just, that's just one thing because you know what? That star, that the bright lights and stuff, you get closer and when some of the light bulbs is, bur- is burning out and some oh, of them okay. are broken, you start to realize, do I really want to live here? <laughs> and so Cameron Brink was bringing that attraction to say, yeah. I want to play on this team. I want to coach on this team. I want to develop this team. Obviously, she's going to be back, but it mm-hmm. it causes a de- it causes the, the 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 delay that the Sparks just did not need no. right no. now. They need all the help they can get. Yeah, <laughs> and, and she was you know box office on the court as well. I mean, like what she was able to do, mm-hmm. like seeing her athletic ability, I was like, oh, I didn't expect that, you know, at all. Yeah. I don't think many people did. We definitely wish Cameron Brink a very speedy recovery. And one person that spoke very highly of Cameron Brink is Asia Wilson, the face that runs the place. Mm-hmm. It appears that she's starting to get the recognition that she deserves. But why is she more talked about? Well, we know why. <laughs> I mean, why? I don't know. We know it because it's the Young Bucks time to shine right now. Mm-hmm. And the Young Bucks are giving stuff worth talking about. We just talked about a lot of the rookies that are coming in that are really bringing a lot of eyes to the WNBA. Now, I think that's helped Asia Wilson as well because it's caused the fans that have been here to galvanize and be like, hold up, hold up, hold up. Don't just be giving the throne away to Angel Reese or to Caitlin Clark. Give the throne to the person I let her decide that she wants to give it up first because that's one of the biggest things. You can't lose a 22. And when you just look at the pedigree of what she's done in this league, with the teammates that she has, with the players that she has, to win back-to-back championships, to, like I said, to be uh, rookie of the year when she was drafted, mm-hmm. those aren't easy accomplishments to come by. Yeah. And so I think for Asia Wilson, she's – she I like her as a player because she, she's like, look, I don't need the recognition to know that I am one of the best players I've ever played in this league, and I don't need the applause from people hanging on the back, can't even get in, <laughs> to validate me and I respect that about her and I think she wants to win and I think that's her focus and she's like look I'll let the hardware speak for itself when it's all said and done while I rock my own shoes. Um, year after year. Also. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's giving 
<laughs> three P? I don't know. Is it imminent? But no, I think I think absolutely what you said is right, and I think that that is also what makes her such a special player is that she doesn't need all of the applause and the accolades. Most people, you know, especially some of the younger people, I feel like they need that to boost their ego and to you know keep them going. But she has intrinsic motivation that I've never seen. I'm like, bro, she's a dog. <laughs> like <laughs> when I was watching her against the Fever last, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Asia, she's I need, averaging. She's, I need she's the averaging. Jersey. I need the everything. She's <laughs> averaging twenty-seven and eleven. Yeah, it's, it's insane. I mean, quietly, averages, quietly, quietly, and yes. you just dropped like thirty-five at the end of the night before. So when you're averaging those kind of numbers, and you're just, yeah, I respect that because that's that's the kind of player I think the Aces need. I think that's a really big idea of like the culture that is in that building of like mm-hmm. it is a team because mm-hmm. you have multiple stars on that team that could put up those numbers so when you have that one star that is willing to put up those numbers and not have to sit there and be like why aren't you talking about me mm-hmm. that's, that's a winning formula absolutely uh, i'm gonna say this as the as the wise paul Heyman once said asia wilson is the tribal chief <laughs> i don't care what nobody says she is the face that runs the place and i can't wait for her apparel I'm, lo- I'm loving the commercials. I-, I do think she's finally getting her just due. Mm-hmm. I think this is the time, as you said, because of yes. the two y- young ladies that we mentioned earlier and, and others too, Kate Money Martin, mm-hmm. you know, Cameron Brink, Rakia Jackson. Yeah. I think there's a plethora of other rookies that are also shining to be able to be in those positions and pay attention to other players. Somebody that got slept on to me, which was Asia Wilson. So we'll see if they three-peat. It's going to be tough. It's never going to be easy. <laughs> no. Uh, but it's going to be a fun season nonetheless because we got a whole plethora of games before and after this Olympic break. But I want to thank to my guests this week, Lauren Jones and Elisa Hernandez. Thank you, ladies, for coming by. Thank Appreciate you. you. <laughs> now let's get on to the players of the week. And my congratulations goes out to Sabrina Nescu and Asia Wilson, who are the players of the week. Anisku averaged 19.8 points per game and 4.7 rebounds per game for the first place New York Liberty. Now, Wilson averages 27 and 10 for the Las Vegas Aces. Also, huge congratulations out to Angel Reese, who was named a Rookie of the Month. And as we mentioned earlier, captured her 11th straight double-double. If she keeps putting up numbers like this, you can't tell me this woman, again, is not Rookie of the Year. I don't want to hear no co-Rookie of the Year. I don't want to hear no, 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 no. I don't want to hear none of that co stuff. I don't want to hear, oh, well, she just got her by a few percentage points. I don't play that crap like y'all did Asia Wilson that time, gave her a fourth place vote just so she couldn't get the MVP. Don't play like that because we're going to come at you. We're going to expose who you are. We already know who put that fourth place vote in. We ain't forgot. (laughs) So I just want to say, again, thank you, ladies, for joining us here on the Hardwood 94. And thank you all for joining the show. Remember to check us out every Thursday, 12 noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, on YouTube at NH Experience TV. And also, you can take us on the go. Available on all the streaming platforms, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and Spotify for free 99. Make sure you follow us on X and IG at The Hardwood 94. That's on IG and X at The Hardwood 94. Well, the game is over. That's our show. Take care, y'all. Co MVPs. Co MVPs. Co MVPs. No, it's only one MVP. Fight on. Only one. Fight on. <laughs>